coming up on Keys News. After a recent report reveals a rise in anti-Semitic incidents in Manchester, we find out how the Jewish community are feeling. We send our own Lucy Ty to Oldham Thunderdome to find out if this girl can. And we're on the hunt for the blue pig's missing tail. Good afternoon and welcome to Keys TV News. I'm Thomas Deegan. And I'm Hannah Smith. Manchester City Council have announced cuts of £18 million to the transport bu budget. £7.1 million will be slashed from the general bus network, including weekend night buses from the city centre. Bus passengers could see reductions in services from as early as April this year. More than one 100 people have lost their jobs as a part of the scheme. Councillors today debated calls for the Palestinian flag to be flown from Manchester Town Hall. Campaigners submitted a petition of 2,500 signatures to Manchester City Council demanding the move. However, a counter petition warning the idea could provoke racial tensions has collected even more names. The council has rejected the petition to fly the Palestinian flag, stating they receive regular requests to fly flags and most of them are rejected. Now, a recent report published by the Community Security Trust revealed that there has been an 80% increase in anti-Semitic incidents in Manchester. A street in Salford was the most recent target of vandals after a swastika was painted in the road. Sir Peter Farhi, Chief Constable of Greater Manchester Police, released a statement saying the swastika was an insult to everyone who fought against Nazism in the Second World War. I visited the Jewish community in Salford to see their reaction. With a reported 80% rise in anti-Semitic incidents in Manchester, Jewish communities are understandably feeling nervous. A report published yesterday revealed that it was only at the weekend that this Salford Street was targeted in an anti-Semitic incident involving anti-Jewish graffiti. And this isn't the only time that Jewish areas of Manchester have been vandalised in this way. Water Park Road in Salford is the most recent target of anti-Jewish vandals after a number of graves were desecrated in Blakely. There's fear these incidents could turn more violent. There has been actual physical violence. I myself have actually been punched in the face. Um, it ranges from extreme verbal abuse. What I mean by extreme verbal abuse is, for example, somebody coming right up to my face and saying, I'm going to kill you, Jew. The residential area of Broughton in Salford is in shock after recent incidents, and anti-Semitic sentiment is something that bothers the community there. There are areas in Manchester which I'd be a bit hesitant to walk through um, because I do sense a bit of tension and because in those particular areas there has been quite a lot of incidents. Um, so I can't say it's actually affected my day-to-day -day life, but there definitely has been talk about, you know, just even if it's just name-calling or um, any sort of, like, insults regarding to us being Jewish, um, there has been quite a bit of that going on. Police are making anti-Semitic crime a priority to ensure Jewish residents in Manchester can continue to practice their customs. We really don't need to panic. We've got to go around our everyday lives and do, you know, whatever we want to do. Um, we mustn't let, you know, the bigots and, and so on win. Hannah Smith, Keys TV News. Police have launched a fresh appeal for information from the death of a student after she visited Manchester's popular burger joint, Almost Famous. Our correspondent Jonathan Mitchell was at the restaurant earlier today. Well, it was here at the Almost Famous Burger restaurant at Deansgate at the Great Northern, where Shahida Shahid, an 18-year-old math student from Salford, visited on the night of the 9th of January. She reportedly told staff of her allergies, but police were called to Withry Road at around 8.30pm following reports that she had collapsed. She died in hospital three days later. Now, Greater Manchester Police and Manchester City Council's Environmental Health Division launched an investigation into this soon after, which has been ongoing for around a month, as to whether or not this was a serious breach of food safety regulations. However, Detective Inspector Neil Cook decided to release a statement this week appealing for further information. In an official statement, he said, Clearly, the family both want and deserve answers. We are determined to get those answers for them. 
Given the complexity of those inquiries and that the legislation is relatively new, this is likely to be a protracted investigation. I would therefore continue to ask anyone who has any information about what happened to contact us and help us with our inquiries. It is clear then that the family of Shahida Shahid still need and want answers as to what exactly happened here that led to a tragic death. Back to you, Hannah. Now, Salford Arts Theatre has had a free renovation courtesy of housing and regeneration firm Keepmoat. Katie Williams reports. Salford Arts Theatre has recently had a free renovation. Repairs totalling tens of thousands of pounds donated by housing and regeneration firm Keep Moat. I went to have a talk with Ronnie Ellis, the artistic director at Salford Arts Theatre, to find out exactly how the free renovation came about. The people involved in the PFI, including the council, um, came to us and said that, you know, we, we can refurbish your toilets so that was where the toilets um, came in but they'd previously um, done some new central heating for us a couple of years ago. The artistic director tells me about the impact it has had on the theatre. Um, overall all the work that's been done within within the theatre um, has had a, a, an impact on people's first impressions of the space. Not only has it benefited the community and the theatre, but it has provided jobs for all trades, including apprentices. I spoke to Keep Moat's oldest apprentice to see what he thought. He's uh, regenerating the area, and uh, Salford is especially paying the uh, getting uh, developed, the houses are being built, and the people around the, or the locals are getting jobs. I'm one of them. I start working as a apprenticeship sometimes back. I'm benefiting from it and it's really important. If you wish to visit this revamped, renovated theatre, why don't you have a look what's on? You can visit their website at www.salfordartstheatre.com. Katie Williams, Keys News. And now over to Amber with the sport. Thanks, Tom. Well... Well, the conference premiere last night saw Macclesfield move within five points of table toppers Barnet with a 2-1 victory over Altrincham. Meanwhile, in the conference north, Chorley travelled to Staley Bridge and took all three points thanks to a first-half penalty from James Dean. In the Evo Stick Premier Division, FC United moved up to sixth place after a 3-1 victory over Barwell, whilst Trafford fell to a 3-2 defeat at home to Marine. In the Manchester Premier Cup semi-final, Erlen were on the wrong side of a 4-0 thrashing from Mosley. And finally, Curzon Ashen edged a three-goal th thriller at Radcliffe Borough. Now, a local roller derby team have been attracting new members using the popular hashtag ThisGirlCan. Lucy Ty went along to a training session to see how the club had been using social media to raise awareness about women in sport. I'm here at the Oldham Thunderdome to meet the Rainy City Roller Girls and find out more about the sport. There are 14 players on each team and five of them go on at any one time in a two minute jam. Each team has a jammer, which is a scorer, and they wear a star on their helmet and then they have to try and get past the opposing team so the other four skaters that aren't on their team and for everyone that they pass to get a point. Formed in 2008, the team moved to their new home in 2011. With the help from Sport England, the club have replaced the floor and added new audience seating. Now the club have taken to Twitter to promote the team using the hashtag ThisGirlCan. The ThisGirlCan hashtag was great really because it's just raising awareness for women getting involved in activity and sport. So um, to be kind of on board with that, it just kind of suits who we are as well. Um, and it's about women from uh, like every, every different kind of um, background and interests and things like that, we all come together to um, do this one thing but that you know we're all involved in. It's trying to make something fun and adventurous accessible to everybody, so to show people, show other women in particular that you can go out, you can do something adventurous, it doesn't have to cost a fortune and it can be really fun and you can do it with your friends. And this is the first time we've been and we're just having an absolute blast, it's great fun. I've had a great time with the Rainy City Roller Girls. I'm battered, bruised, but not beaten. This girl can. Lucy Ty, Keys TV News, Oldham. 
Thanks, Amber. Now, our film reviewer Tom has braved the wrath of North Korea this week and been to see the interview. So, how was the film that nearly started World War Three? Ah, uh, yes, the interview, the film that nearly plunged us all into thermonuclear war. Now, I do feel that before I review this film, I do just quickly need to address some of the controversy surrounding it. I think it's brilliant that we live in a world where you can lampoon these, you know, we make these dictators into monsters, but they're not monsters, they're just men, and you can laugh at a man. You can't laugh at a monster. The only problem, the film is rubbish. Absolutely absolute rubbish. Um, I could list, I could write entire dissertations on why this film's bad. It's sexist, it's racist, but worst of all, for a comedy, it's not funny. None of the jokes, none of the jokes landed for me. I didn't laugh once. The thing about this film that I really, 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 really hated was that it's so stank of, of Seth Rogen and James Franco sitting together thinking, we can improvise, we know what we're doing, we're funny guys, we don't need direction. Good comedy comes from strict direction. It's the, it's, it always has. And watching this film, it's just so clear at times they don't know where they're going with it. They'll just go like, um, fart joke? I mean, it's not funny. It, it's never been funny. And I'm sat there watching it and I'm just thinking, this is nearly offensive. How is, the, you know, I, I, I support the I support that, them releasing this film. I, I really do. But it's just not good. And that's the problem. Now, of course, if we're having this issue with bad films, are we paying too much to go to the cinema, Tom? Well, yes, a recent YouGov poll of the public found that over 70, well, 70% 70 of us think that cinema tickets are indeed too expensive. Even worse than that, since 2002, we've seen a 50% rise in cinema tickets. Now, this is because, unfortunately, less and less of us are going to the movies. And the reasons are, there's Netflix, there's piracy, there are all these competing okay. things, and it's a thing Thank you so much for that, Tom. Now let's go over to Lois with the weather. Hi there, and as you can see, it's pretty bad out here as well today. And unfortunately, it will be for the rest of the week. Tonight, it's going to be frosty over the night in areas with a low of zero degrees Celsius. Tomorrow is going to be cloudy and with a high of 5 degrees Celsius. Friday is going to rain in the afternoon which will lead on into the evening. But luckily this will lead on to Saturday which will have sunny spells all over Manchester. Sunday is unfortunately going to worsen where we're going to get heavy rain throughout the day and that could possibly lead into next week. Thank you very much and back to you. Thanks for that Lois. What have you been offered in your butchers recently? A blue pig's tail? <laughs> Staff at the Blue Pig Bar in the Northern Quarter is offering a £150 reward for the safe return of their mascot's pride and joy. Gemma Crozier got her snout stuck into the investigation. This is a Keys TV News urgent appeal. I'm here in the Northern Quarter outside the Blue Pig Bar, where today this pig behind me is feeling a little bit blue, he's also looking a little bit blue. After having his tail stolen, the bar's now offering a reward of £150 for the tail safe return. Staff believe the curly pig tail may have been nabbed as part of a drunken prank. The mascot named Francis Bacon was custom made for the High Street Bar at a cost of more than £2,000. Francis also holds some sentimental value. If you go in the bar, there's a little doorstop um, above the bar, which is an iron doorstop with wings on it, and it's from my mum's garden, and it's this really cool little pig. And when I, when I first thought about Blue Pig, the name, I just thought that would be an excellent little pig to model it on, because he's got a little snout sticking up, and he's really cute, and he's got a lovely little tail. Right, so when did you first realise that the pig's tail was missing? <laughs> Well, I was in the bar, when was it? I was in the bar last week and I was just doing some work and having a walk around like I normally do. And I just stared up at him because I love that pig and it just wasn't there. And I thought I got it wrong. Um, and then there it was, and I went to see the managers and apparently it had actually gone missing two weeks before, but nobody has actually told me that. Oh, no. So anyway, I said, quick, tweet it out, quick, quick, we've got to find out who's done it. And then all this happened. So if somebody's watching this and they know where this tail is, what would you say to that person? Give it back now and we'll say no more about it. There we are. One passerby believes the tail may be in Sweden. Last time I saw it, I, it was in uh, Sweden. It was in Sweden? Yes, Gothenburg. Whether or not it's in Sweden, I just hope this tail has a happy ending. Gemma Crozier, Keys TV News. See you tomorrow at 1.30. Goodbye. <laughs>